we don't raise our children to be perfect. We raise them to know better. So, uh, but before I go into that, if you think about um, our channel and, and what we've talked about, the idea here is not to tell people what to do and not to provide Dr. X's magic elixir to uh, how to retire early, because I, I just don't think that exists. But what the goal is, is the goal is to help people gain perspective uh, from somebody else and have some of those conversations they may not have had about a topic that a lot of people don't necessarily achieve, which is early retirement and financial independence. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that we talk about sitting around the dinner table. We might talk about things like politics or we might talk about, uh, you know, how we did in school. Or we may be talking about work or we may talk about getting a job. When you're talking to kids, you're saying, look, go to school and get good grades and you could be a superhero someday, whatever the case is. But there's very few places that you can have real honest conversations about something as important as retirement and even more so when you look to get that from a person who's not a financial advisor i went around youtube uh when i first started the channel a few months ago and all i saw were financial advisors and people of that sorts and you know and there were other people that had a pragmatic way of going about it but they didn't look like me and so am i to walk away and say that people that look like me don't retire and the answer is no because i see people that look like me retired all the time they just don't happen to be um, in my age group. And so what that told me was there's an opportunity to have conversations um, and that perhaps people might be able to learn from my story or pieces of my story or pieces of somebody else's story that I picked up and decided to tell on the channel. But either way, the reality is, is you know, when I was 51, I retired. I'm living my best life. I'm not doing anything substantially different than most other people, except just trying to do the things that bring me joy. And so I share that with you as a way not to brag or any of that, but to try to bring some hope because I think sometimes when we look at people doing things we want to do, we see them as being these larger than life figures and that's just not the case. And so the, the purpose of this channel is, you know, I happen to be six foot eight, but that's about where it stops in terms of me being larger than life. I'm just a guy that worked hard, saved a bunch um, and and tried to do some of the right things and, and made a lot of mistakes along the way. And so... I try to share as much of that with you as I can within context so it so it all makes sense. Um, but, you know, it's funny because when you when you start taking a look at something like retirement, you know, there's a lot of people and, and you'll see them if you go and you look through some of the comments and some of the comments I've taken out because I just thought they were offensive. And uh, our goal here is not to offend anybody or to be offensive. And I, I think there's you know, I think there's a way to ask questions and I think there's a way to be contrarian. And if we're trying to be contrarian to make a point to say that some people are better than others, there's just no place for you on this channel. Period. End of story. My viewership goes down. Fine. But what we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on having constructive conversations about a real topic at a time where a lot of people are feeling like it's not an attainable goal which is retiring earlier, finding financial independence. And so I want to talk to people about why that's possible and how we get there. And sometimes it's about talking about people's decisions because there are people, look, we all make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. Some of our decisions are good. Some of our decisions aren't so good. I get that. And there's nothing wrong with acknowledging the fact that a decision is a bad decision, but you can't say that all of X number of people are making bad decisions and that's why they're not there. And so that leads me to the next point, which some of the reasons that people don't find themselves in a better spot are systemic. Uh, you know, when you look at generations of people who weren't afforded to buy houses, when you look at generations of people who couldn't get jobs, when you look at generations of people who weren't able to obtain um, any real wealth, and when you look at a gender of people who were saddled with uh, taking care of babies uh, while men went out and built their built their work lives and and lost that time and so those are things that until we got to a point that uh, some of the legislation caught up those are things that had a significant impact and making it more difficult for some groups to get ahead than others and the fact of the matter is is you know people could say oh yeah that's hundreds of years ago thousands of years ago so I'm gonna I'm gonna just Put this in perspective for you. My parents were both on the front lines of civil rights out of, uh, out of Tennessee. They're written up in magazines and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go into that because it's not about trying to figure that out. Uh, it's about helping each other. Um, but 
my mother's father was born in 1889. I think it's 1889 or 1890. And so he died when I was born, but her father um, was born in 1890, which means that about less than 20 years after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, my grandfather was born. So anybody that, that wants to, you know, kind of dodge the conversation by saying, I'm, you know, it's, it's hundreds and thousands of years ago, it wasn't. And if, if that's the way that you want to go about the topic, then it's probably good that we just don't continue the conversation because it's about having conversations with constructive facts about um, things that happen, whether they happen to me, somebody I know, or there is a verifiable set of uh, stories that, that help me understand exactly what happened. And so, you know, so when you look at things being systemic, I say all that to say that things aren't as far back as they seem. They just seem like it because there's so much going on today. Um, and so the idea of people just um, pulling up their bootstraps and um, and they'll find success. I mean, that sounds good. It's romantic. It's a novel idea. But the fact of the matter is, is ask yourself that question. Do you really believe that? And if you really believe that, then the learning that you have to that we need to go through is going to extend way beyond this channel. And, uh, and, and some of that, but, you know, and, and I think the other problem with that whole pulling up the bootstraps, pulling yourself up by your bootstraps conversation is it implies that people that aren't successful are the problem. And, you know, the fact is, is that for most of you out there, your kids in their twenties are going to live with you. For most of you out there, you're going to have student debt. For most of you out there, you've got credit card debt. For most of you out there, you have at some level are trying to uh, keep up with the Joneses because somebody has something that you want that maybe you can't afford. Now, I'm not sitting here saying anybody's bad. What I'm saying is, is that these things are happening all the way around the board. And so you can't say, well, everybody's struggling. And I'm not just talking about people of color. I'm talking everybody. Everybody's struggling with student loan debt. Everybody's struggling with the cost of housing. Everybody's struggling with uh, the cost of goods and services and inflation. Everybody's caught with uh, caught up in not being able to save enough and not feeling like they can retire and so on. And so that's so to say that all of those people that all of you are the problem. I don't subscribe to that. I think there are some people that have made some decisions that have impacted their ability to get there. But the fact that a majority of our society is unable to get there tells me that it's not individuals. That's the problem, that there's systemic factors. And I'm not saying I believe that America's greatest country on the, in the world. I would not want to be anywhere else but here. But I also think that we continue to become a more perfect union by working at those things, those opportunities that we have as a nation to work on. And so. You know, so if you're not successful, you're not where you want to be, you are not the problem. And it's the person that's trying to subjugate you into a box. That's the problem. But we won't go there right now. And then, you know, the other thing, too, is, is there's layers behind why things happen the way they do. It's easy. You know, I've always been a person that I, I, I prided myself on being able to uh, process large sets of information really fast to come out with very logical and grounded solutions. But not everything's that way. And so when you look at something like uh, financial independence and why some people haven't gotten to financial independence, there's a host of reasons why. I mean, you can look at one of my last videos and I talk about some of those barriers and those barriers are real. And you can also see in the comments where there were some people and I took some of the comments out because I just didn't think they were constructive. I'm not calling anybody racist. I'm not calling anybody any names. I just don't think they were constructive for the uh, type of conversation that we were having. And I'm only, I'm only interested in constructive conversations, whether it's on my YouTube channel, my personal life, anywhere. If it's not constructive, I'm not wasting my time because there's too much work to be done out here to make this world, to uplift this human condition. Um, but, you know, so by, but my point is, is that just by assigning kind of a blanket ration out to everybody, you're just wrong. If you, if you're doing that, then you're just wrong. Because you can't say black people are just, white people are just, Asian people are just, Mexican people are just, men are just, women are just. Because, you know, like I tell people all the time, I'm a black man in America, but we are not a monolith. Because I could show you as many people that look like me that are different than me, 
as people that look like me that are the same as me, vice versa. So at the end of the day, it really comes down to to the individual set of circumstances. A lot of times when I'm talking to you folks about um, the early retirement picture, one of the things I always say is talk to a professional because a professional can help you with your unique circumstances. Well, in life, it's about those unique circumstances and the decisions are unique to every individual. The systemic factors, although they are broader, have an impact on different people in different ways. And so the goal is to try to just understand why is a person, what is it that a person internalized to cause them to do this? Or why did they do that? Or what is their circumstance that created this? Because then you start getting into the real meaning, you start getting into real solutions, as opposed to just trying to make other people look worse than you because you happen to be able to go to college and somebody else couldn't. I think that's the wrong way to go about it because at the end of the day, you know, I, I had a saying when I was uh, working, a, a guy told me, he says, you know, he says the reality is A students work for B students and C students run the company. And what he was saying is that A students were so busy in school they didn't do any of the social stuff and the B students did enough in school to get ahead but still also had friends and the C students were the ones that were out making all the connections. So the fact of the matter is, is, and I've always believed this, is that I'm not any better than anybody, but nobody's better than me. And I, I believe the same for you as well. So at the end of the day, it comes down to trying to understand those layers that help us understand why people are in their unique circumstances. And part of what I try to do on this channel is I don't have all the answers. I don't have Dr. X's magic elixir. I never claim to be. And I, I hope I don't come across like I do have all the answers because I think I make it a point in all my videos to say I don't have all the answers. But it's having the conversations that, that let people know that certain things exist. You know, I, I go back to you don't raise kids to be perfect. You raise them to know better. The fact of the matter is, is you don't raise your kids because you expect them to walk around the house every day picture perfect. You walk, you treat, you, you raise your kids in such a way that when they go out to their friend's house or they go out to school or they go out to work or they go out to do whatever they do, that they don't make an ass of, their fa of themselves and by virtue of doing that, make you look bad as a parent because they don't know how to act. So at least they know how to do it. Do they always do it? No. Do they do it most of the time? No. But when push comes to shove and it comes down to them having to know how to do it, guess what? They know how to do it. That's, that's the same way it is for, for people. So I don't expect everybody out here to have all of this ultimate wisdom because I don't have all the ultimate wisdom. And if you're looking for ultimate wisdom, listen to me, then you're going to get some wisdom, but it's going to be incomplete because there's a lot of people out there that know a lot more than I do. Now, there's not a lot of people that retired at 51 and are doing a YouTube channel that look like me than we do. But in terms of the rest of the wisdom, there's a lot of people out there they have a lot more wisdom. And I'm not saying that I'm the only person you should listen to. You should listen to all of them. Listen to as many people as you can because you're never gonna, you never know when you're going to get that right piece of information that helps you. Uh, because I, I think when you, when you look at our society as a whole, and you know, I'm not getting political here because that's not, the, that's not the purpose of this channel. But what I am going to say is that as a country, this country's fractured. And this country's fractured because we spend so much time trying to figure out how we're better than, how we make more money than, how we're different than, who we're like, who we're not alike. And, and we get in all the political and religious dynamics and all that stuff that um, our society creates these gaps. And so and, and, and because we've subjugated different people to different places in our thinking, then their ability to understand us becomes impacted. Or just like my ability to understand you becomes impacted. If I come to you and say, hey, my name's Sabado, I'd like to get to know you. And you say, Sabado, go to hell. Well, guess what? If you come to me with the problem, the reason I'm not able to help you with your problem is partially because you didn't let me learn enough about you in order to be able to help you with the problem. And so, I mean, it becomes, it becomes that simple. And so when you've had people who are separate but equal for a long time. You have people that you're trying to keep out of the country. You have people that you're demonizing in the news. You have all of these things that are going on, um, you know, where you have occupations of people that you have bad actors that then paint the whole institution. I mean, it's, 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 it's bad because then we really don't have the ability to have the conversations that it takes in order to figure out what's the solution 
and to overcome the solution. And so and I'll give you an example. One of the things I, one of the conversations that I have with people sometimes, I say, you know, I think if you want to understand police violence, right? And again, we're not going to talk about police violence against unarmed black motorists, which we know is a huge problem, but we're going to just talk about police violence. So I say, well, if you want to reduce police violence, then you have to pay police officers more. And they say, well, what do you mean by that? They're already making good money. But having traveled the country and seen a majority of our states, there's some places where the police departments are doing really, really well. They're very well funded. The city I grew up in had the highest paid police department in a for a lot of years. I don't know if it's like that anymore. But you also had to have some college and, and some of that. And so my, my point is, is if you pay the police officers more, then police officers are going to want to, um, more people are going to want to be police officers. Then if you, more people want to become police officers and it becomes more coveted, guess what happens? You get more competition for it. As you get more competition for it, then you could set more criteria so that way you could get exactly the type of person that you want. Why? Because you paid that person a little bit more. Now, I don't think that's the answer to all the police problems in America. But what I do think is I think that is a point of conversation to help us get there. And if more people are having that conversation than saying somebody's bad because of X, Y, and Z, then we're going to find ourselves finding solutions to a lot of the issues that we have in this country. And we found solutions to a lot of issues that we've had in the country, but there, there continues to be more. And, you know, and, and, you know, the key is, is take your time to really understand uh, the perspectives of, perspectives of others. You know, it's easy to push a, to push a snap judgment down on somebody, but take the time. You know, when you're in a conversation and your conversation is all just point, counterpoint, point, counterpoint, well, guess what? You walk away, either the solution is going to be too complicated or somebody's just not going to listen to you because you didn't listen to what it is they had to say. And then you end up solving nothing when you could have sat down and just said, hey, look, we have an issue here. Let's let's talk about this issue. And one of the things that I'm doing here on this channel is I'm giving you me as a person of color that you can ask those questions to, that you could come and you can talk to. You could try to understand. I've held high enough positions in major enough organizations to understand some of those dynamics and things that come in play. And I understand some things. They are uh, because of certain external factors. And sometimes there's not. Sometimes there's just things that are going on behind the curtain that you just don't know. But at the end of the day, our ability as a country uh, to, to get to where we need to be is really going to be based on our ability to communicate. I firmly believe that you start leveling out the numbers of people that are able to um, you know, find their, their, their best lives. Once you start having the conversations about number one, what does your best life look like? Number two, how do I get there? Number three, are there ways that I could pay for school? Number four, how do I save money? What are the different types of accounts are there? Because in some families, people are having those conversations all the way through. And it's not like you have this sit down at the table and you both go through it. It's not always like that. Sometimes it's just you glean things from from small conversations. But if you're if all you're dealing with is scraping by trying to make it, trying to make it, trying to make it, you're not having those conversations. And so, you know, part of what I'm trying to extend myself as is somebody that can have some of those conversations with you. Because again, I say every time, I'm not an expert in any one of these things, but I've gotten a lot of good information I was able to use. And guess what? The outcome was I was able to retire at 51. And so, again, it's it, it, the other thing I think is important, too, and I, and I think this is just a responsibility that we all have, is when you see somebody speaking out of turn about somebody for a, a nefarious reason, it's your responsibility to speak up. I'm not going to say that you should. I'm not going to say the right thing to do is. It's your responsibility to speak up. You know, you hear somebody making jokes about Asian people. You hear somebody making jokes about African-American people. You hear somebody making jokes about women. You hear somebody making jokes about LGBTQ people. Well, the only reason they're not talking about you like that is because you're in the room. Because you're going to fit into some group. And if, if somebody is talking bad about another person and I don't say anything, then I am now complicit in that um, in that conversation. It's just like I started talking bad about that other person. It's just like you started talking bad about that other person. And we owe it to each other because the fact is, is that if you feel that way about another individual, then you need to have that conversation with them. If you're not having that conversation with them, 
And you're just telling me, well, you're telling me because either A, you don't believe it enough to tell them, or B, you're afraid of the repercussions of that coming out because it's not true, because the truth is the truth. And so, you know, part of what I try to do on this channel is make sure that I speak truth based on information that I have. So I don't have, you know, what we don't have on this channel, which is nice, is we don't have a common enemy. It's not, you know, we're not fighting hunger, we're not fighting homelessness, we're not fighting systemic oppression or any of that. But these are all things that come into play and I think it's important for us to know that they exist. Because I think, you know, I got a couple of comments on the on the channel earlier this week and people were giving comments and they were they were comments that told me that maybe they didn't have the type of exposure that they might need to have in order to have a, a rounded uh, perspective on on what it is that they were they were commenting on, and I've I've since re, uh, removed those comments because I didn't I didn't see that they were constructive, um, but I, I I think it at least starts the conversation. So my hope would be that somebody takes something they may have agreed with or not agreed with on my channel, and went and had a conversation with their friend. Because then they could say, well, you know, the Sabado guy said this and this. And then they say, oh, yeah, well, you know, he's actually right because of this, this, this. And then they don't dis they don't agree, so they have another conversation. Then what ends up happening is you end up circling the wagon because everybody's having this conversation. And that's uh, that's what I am hoping uh, stems from from this channel. So, again, so remember, um, you know, you don't you don't raise your kids to be perfect. You raise them to know better. I don't expect any of us, any of you out in the, in the YouTube uh, universe to be perfect. I don't expect every, all of us to know the exact same things, much less know everything. But what I do hope is that we can continue to have these constructive conversations in a way that help uplift the human condition, help people feel better about their chances, and really just bring hope to people. Because I, I think people really have a hard time getting their head around the fact that um, you know, I grew up in a in a lower socioeconomic neighborhood. I um, went to school uh, on my own. I didn't get any loans or anything. Paid for school on my own. Uh, my parents helped me out. I'm not going to front on that, but you know, but we didn't. But we I didn't go to an expensive school. I went to a state school at a time when state schools weren't as expensive. And um, I started working, uh, save, uh, raised two kids. And uh, saved my money and got divorced, lost it all, had to rebuild. And now here we are. Why? Because I took some of what I learned, some of those baseline things uh, that I've spoken about in other episodes and, and use those here. And that's all we're really trying to do here is that a lot of people, again, when you see people that have accomplished something that you've wanted that you wanted to accomplish, a lot of times we see that as out of out of reach or it's this person must be this or must be that. And I'm just not that guy. I, you know, I, I wish I could tell you that I was. I'm just not. I'm nobody special. I'm just a guy that um, listened to what other people told me and, and, and took some good advice. And, you know, now I just try to stay within my means and not have to go into work every day. So um, so, again, I, I think that's a. Uh, that's about all I wanted to talk about today. I want to get a quick one out to you because um, it was something that was on my mind. I, I just think, you know, it's at the end of the day, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to say America's bad. I'm not trying to say any type of people are bad or good or any of that. But what I am saying is that the more that we understand each other's struggles, the better off we're going to be. The more that I understand how the women in my life were impacted by the way they've been treated, then the better man I'm going to be for them. Um, and it's the same way for, uh, for each of us and the people that we have the opportunity to, uh, to work with. And some of us are in places where we only see one type of people. So this may be, I may be the view from the outside world that helps you have some of that conversation. So, um, so on that note, you know, I'm going to go ahead and sign off, but I do want to, uh, just ask that if you liked, uh, any of this content, you find it useful or valuable in any way, please consider, uh, subscribing to the channel. Um, you know, I, I make comment, uh, comment, I make content, um, several times a week. Uh, if you, if you turn on YouTube, I'm usually out there with something, whether it's a long form or a short, um, but subscribe to the channel. And if you hit the notification button, uh, I'm sorry to bell, it'll tell you that there's a new one up there. And, 
Uh, you can hit the like button so then I'll know how you felt about this video. But again, you know, let me know what you think. Let me let me know what your thoughts are. I mean, it's I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some of you out there that are like, oh, no, he doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, those people are just lazy and this, that and the other. But it's it's just not the case. And, you know, but again, I, I do look forward to, to some of that dialogue with you because I think it is important that we um, that we have some of the real conversations, you know, skating around the stuff isn't going to do us any good. We really need to sit down and have some good conversations. And so I look forward to continuing doing that on this channel and with uh, and I and I hope that you subscribe. You know, there's nothing on here that I'm charging you for. I don't I don't charge or or, or sell anything because it's again I'm retired. I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing this because I I think more people should be uh, should be in the same situation I'm in. So on that note, I think I will uh, I will cut it here. But uh, you know, have a good rest of your day, and um, I will talk to you soon.